This is the illustration of Epsilon's delta definition of limit using calculus education software for a function whose graph is continuous without any hole or gap. Now, for Epsilon equal to 1, this is a Epsilon's neighborhood of L, that is the points which are at a distance Epsilon's from the L. Now, this Epsilon's neighborhood of L is transformed on the curve and curve finally project it on x-axis giving the corresponding delta neighborhood of C and the value of delta is 0 0.68. Decrease the value of epsilon and for this decrease value of epsilon corresponding delta neighborhood of C that is giving the value of delta 0.54 story continues for the next value of epsilon. Finally for each value of epsilon, we get the corresponding delta value. So therefore, limit of the function exists at x is equal to c. Now what happens in the second case? In the second case, graph of the function has a large gap. Again, for the epsilon value, we are getting delta value. For the decrease the value of epsilon, again, story continues. What happens? when epsilon equal to 0.13. Now this projection from the epsilon neighborhood of L is not reaching to the curve and curve is not able to transform on the x-axis so we are not getting here corresponding delta value. So again if we decrease the value of epsilon again same story continues here projection is not reaching to the curve and curve is not able to transform on the x-axis. So therefore for each epsilon value we are not getting the del corresponding delta value, so therefore limit of the function does not exist. Now in the third case, graph of the function has a hole of a single point. Again, for this epsilon value, there exists delta value, decrease the value of epsilon, we are getting corresponding delta value. Thus, for each value of epsilon, there exists corresponding delta value. So that's why limit of the function exists for a graph, though it has a hole which consists of a single point.